Yeah, well, before we get into Iowa, we've got a little bit of sad news. We, we've had two kids that tested positive. Uh, uh, Madi Sissoko, uh, you know, it was a few days ago. We were kind of hoping that it was a false positive, and his roommate, uh, who's my son, Stephen, um, both of them have tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, kind of get an idea on two things. Number one, those two kids have done everything that possibly they could do and uh, go nowhere. And yet, uh, we're going to closely monitor their progress during their isolation period. They'll be isolated for, you know, 10 days. They'll be out for the 17 and the Big Ten protocols regarding their returns. And uh, thank God everybody else on the team has continued to, to test negative. Uh, and we're just stressing the same thing. You know, you watch the NBA, the NFL, now hockey starting, and you're not only seeing a lot of people getting it, but you're seeing more second time, which was my worry of Christmas and New Year's and, you know, guys that had it maybe earlier in the summer. We didn't have many that had it earlier and then, but the second one comes 90, 100 days later. and. Uh, I guess just like Dr. Fauci said, sounds like it's all pretty, uh, pretty standard as far as what he said and what's going on. But uh, you know, it saddens me, of course, uh, because Marty was a guy that we're starting to play more minutes, and we knew with the Iowa's and Illinois coming up, uh, you know, size would help, and uh, he was starting to play, you know, six, eight, ten minutes a game, whatever he was playing, and uh, building towards even more. But uh, we're just going to continue to support them. Uh, there's nothing we, we feel there was no, uh, no uh, behavior in any way that, uh, you know, they were out at any local establishments or anything like that. It's just, uh, again, a little more unknown, but uh, we're going to have to deal with it. And, uh, you know, for me, at least I can uh, tell my son what I went through, so, uh, and Marty. But uh, as far as the game goes, you know, we, we're coming off a tough loss, uh, probably one more disappointing than most, and maybe some more disappointing than any I've had in my career. But we said it early in the year, the league's going to be unforgiving this year. There's nobody that you can make up on, and uh, it doesn't get any more unforgiving than to play the toughest, highest-ranked team that, you know, in the Big Ten right now, and that's uh, Iowa. Uh, we felt like in the last game, the last really three, four games, we've played much better defense. The last two games, you know, off the charts, better defensively, and came down to, uh, you know, Purdue played really well the second half, and we turned the ball over too much and gave them too many opportunities. Uh, we need to get a better offensive rhythm. That's pretty uh, apparent, and uh, but it starts with protecting the ball. When you turn the ball over, you don't get as many shots, but you don't get as many shots to get 41 shots. I mean, we had that almost in a half one time. So that was uh, discouraging. Aaron and Josh continue to play, uh, I think, very consistently over the last few games. Uh, I think Malik Hall has played very consistent. We just feel like we've got to get maybe a few more shots for Joey Hauser. We feel like we've got to get uh, Gabe Brown uh, back in there a little bit more and Rocket. Uh, you know, I've been very pleased with his practices as he's trying to learn how to, uh, to uh, you know, hit that mid-range shot and things. So he's had a very good week of practice. As far as Iowa goes, as I said, you can argue who's the best team in the league. It depends who plays who. But they definitely are not only one of the best in the league, but one of the best in the country. Uh, you know, and I think they're one of the more, they're not, Wisconsin, but they have some veterans, a lot of veterans, and uh, led by Garza, a four-year guy, Bohannon, who's playing his best basketball by far in the last four or five games after struggling early, and he's either a redshirt senior or even in his sixth year because he's had some injuries, but uh, that's a big difference for them because now they got a point guard shooting the lights out at 50-some percent and a center who's at 60-some percent, so they've got you inside and out. Uh, it's a very skilled team, I, I think, with a relentless center. I mean, when I say relentless, um, if you watch them run, you'd think most of you could cover them, and, uh, 
and the guy just has a heart as big as a lion. I mean, he just keeps going. It's, he might not get to a certain speed, but the speed he's at is the same speed when the game starts and when it ends. Uh, I think he's got a great right hand, left hand. He's got vacuum cleaners for fingers. They just suck the ball in. Very good hands, and he can shoot a three uh, with, with uh, more than respectable consistency. So um, Fran's done a great job with this team because after you get by the point and the center, and now you get into you know Weisskamp and Fredrickson, and his own son, Connor, who I think uh, they've done a great job with. He, what happens when you got guys that have played together for three and four years, people do understand their roles, and nobody does it better than Connor McCaffrey. He, uh, you know, he's kind of a point forward. He kind of just sets the right picks, makes the right passes, takes a shot when needed, but really understands his role, and I think, uh, probably an undervalued member of that team. In Weisskamp and Frederick, two guys that are, you know, as good as any wings in the league. They can shoot it from three, they're 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, pretty athletic, they can put it on the floor. So, you know, when you look at it on paper, it looks like the best team we've played by far. And yet, uh, you know, they're, uh, They've still got, like everybody's got, he's got things that, uh, you know, I think their defense has improved as a team, which used to hurt them a little bit. But I, I you, you kind of cheer for a team like this <laughs> if you weren't playing them because, number one, I think Fran's a very good coach and a very good guy. But the way their team has, he hasn't built it with transfers. He's built it with freshmen. And he's built it with guys coming in and growing together. And... Uh, they have a lot to offer. So, questions? We'll go first to Chris Ward. Hey, Tom. Uh, in particular with Garza, uh, with, with Mati out, how much, what is the challenge now for, for the other three guys in, in the post, uh, the, the centers? And, and how do you, I mean, I know you won't give it away totally, but I mean, do you feel like you can go small on him? Like last game, do you feel like go big or you can just want to throw a lot of different bodies at them. We don't have a lot of big bigs to throw at them, but we'll throw a lot of different bodies. But, you know, I think Marcus is going to have to step up and get more of a chance. And I think Julius Marble, who I've been a fan of all year, but just trying to work him in. And, uh, you know, Joey can cover some. Uh, you know, we could go small at the forwards. Sometimes they're small at the forwards, but big at center. And, uh, you know, whether we dig, we double some, we do some different things. As you said, I wouldn't give it away, but I'm, I don't think it's any secret. As I told my team, if we do a hell of a job on him, he might score 25. If we do a poor job, he might get 33, you know. He's kind of going to get his points. <clears throat> what we've got to make sure of is we put an emphasis on Garza, but if we put everything on Garza, then, you know, every two he makes is two. Every three they make because you don't guard the perimeter is three. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that uh, at the end of the day, you know, you, you don't want to try to stop the two and give up the three. So they've got great balance. That's what makes them a top five team. Go next, Max Charbonneau. Um, I know the, the defense has, has played better the last few games, and, and you're happy with that offensively. I know the turnovers are a big thing, but. What's the key to finding that consistency offensively? Because it seems like this is a game you're going to have. You're certainly going to have to score. Got to keep up with this team. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think that's maybe a good issue. You know, I, I do think turnovers create some of the problem. I mean, we had four turnovers or three the first half of the Purdue game, and we're scoring a decent amount of points, shooting a very high percentage. Um, and we've had a, the turnovers have been in a variety of ways. I mean, illegal screens, uh, things that aren't normal. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think we've got to get a little more consistent on shots that are taken. You know, sometimes, you know, Josh is making a good shot, you know, a, a little tougher shot. we got to get maybe pass up the first shot to get the second one, which is a little better, except for Joey and Malik. I think they got to take the first one they get because they don't take enough shots, and some of that will fall on us, some of our personnel. Um, I still think that the big thing uh, – 
would be getting our break going again. You know, we've, rebu- we've, we've defended better, but we haven't necessarily rebounded better or run better. And that usually is the staple of our program. So uh, we want it to be a track meet. I'm sure they do too. So, uh, you know, maybe it'll be more open and that might be better for, for us anyway as far as getting some shots up and getting some baskets in. Um, so that would be the things I think. You know, I think A.J. has done a decent job, you know, distributing as, as has uh, fostered some. I still think Rocket can do some things because of his explosiveness. And uh, we're going to have everybody's got to play a little bit better. I mean, only Aaron has been the consistent uh, shooting the ball, you know, when, I mean, Rocket and Joey and, and, uh, and Josh have all kind of struggled lately to shoot the ball. And if they're not shooting a good percentage, they're getting the most shots. Tom, um, I know Iowa's on the clock right now, but Monday we all watched uh, Nick Saban win his seventh national championship, historic win. Because of your relationship with him, because of his relationship with Michigan State, I'm just curious, do you guys get inspiration from him? You know, uh, do your players get inspired by seeing something like that? How does that impact your overall championship culture, too? You know, it's interesting. I always get inspired by Nick. I just appreciate the consistency he's done things with and, and the class and humility. I mean, he, he never makes anything about him. If you ask me, he makes it all about his team. But, I mean, there's a great example. Uh, you know, we played North Carolina about 10 years ago when they had Hansborough and El- uh, Ellington and some of the – all of them. There were four of them that could have left early. They all came back to win a championship. I heard Nick say something about seven or eight guys could have left that came back to win a championship. And uh, when you see that um, – Winning becomes the priority. This day and age, it's a little harder for to make winning a priority. Everybody's got, you know, make sure they get their clicks on the social media or make sure they get their highlights or make sure that they, um, you know, get their draft status up. I mean, it's just the, the, the way of the world right now. And uh, I think that I told my team to watch, at least watch the pregame, because there's always human interest stories, you know, that receiver, I mean, the class he had in dealing with everything, uh, uh, you know, the running back. I mean, I, I, those things impressed the heck out of me. And, and I always say, when you see that happen, you say they got what they deserved. And everybody thinks they got the best players, and they probably do. But uh, best players don't win you games. And the players who play the best win you games. And uh, I thought that they demonstrated a lot of that. I was proud of Nick, happy for him. The, beat Bear Bryant's record in this and that, and records are made to be broken. Um, knowing Nick, it matters none. He's probably worried about next year already. But at the same time, I think we could all learn something from the consistency he's brought because he brings it in recruiting, he brings it in offense and his defense, he gets different coordinators. Uh, he's got what I would call a culture there that is second to none, and, and the culture is about winning. And you listen to the players talk about it. Um, I, I think it's one of the great sports uh, programs because winning is the only thing talked about. And that's just not the case all the time. And, it, and it, they've had a few slip-ups there. I mean, I've talked to Nick enough to know that, you know, maybe they end up 9-3, and three, which is a slip-up there. But, I mean, where, where players start worrying about, you know, I mean, you, you got a guy with a broken frickin' leg, and he wants to play so bad in the game that he plays after having surgery, and he's a pro prospect. You got a pro prospect, the lineman, the center, who wants to go in there. He just had knee surgery, and he puts him in for the last play. I mean, if you really watch that, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in sports. I think for all of us, that is an inspiring, uh, emotional, and Nick deserves some credit, but those players deserve a lot of credit because they're the ones that put themselves on the line. Even being injured, it just showed winning was more important than their future, and that's not the case much anymore. That's great. Let's go next to Brendan Quinn. Tom, um, uh, with those positive COVID tests, how um, how are you guys able to avoid a shutdown? And- is there any concern about the status of their thinking? Um, 
Well, we were able to avoid a shutdown because of uh, the uh, everyday testing that we do. Um, that has made it a lot better for us and gives us a, a chance. Like when I got it, we didn't shut down. I was with my players every day because I tested 16 straight days uh, negatively and who knows how I got it, but got it. And, and, uh, and so they just got me out of here before I could infect somebody else. And we did the same with Marty. As soon as we found out he tested positive, we got him out. Same with Steven. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we've gone more than a few days now uh, with nobody else testing positive. And uh, that doesn't mean you're completely out of the woods. And uh, we will also, you know, now that we got our testing done this morning, contact Iowa and explain the situation. But I think for the most part, um, uh, that's why we test every day. Uh, and that's how it's worked. And it's worked pretty well for the most part. Now, if we have a bunch of guys that get it uh, and test positive, then we will be shut down. Yeah, I, I asked the part about, you know, there have been some games in the league that have been canceled because of the quotes been, you know, an abundance of caution. So I just wondered if there's any possibility of Iowa saying, you know, let's, let's call this off or you guys agree? Um, I, I, imagine there, I imagine there is a chance of that. And, uh, and I would completely understand. I mean, I, I don't think any of us really know what's going on. I think we're just trying to, to trust the process and the protocol the best we can. But if that happened, um, I would totally understand. Um, I mean, if, if it was vice versa, um, like when we played at Duke, they thought there was a false positive and I was still ready to play the game as long as they had, because they were testing every day. Uh, but that's totally, uh, each school has its own discretion on that. I could say no, uh, I guess if I wanted to too, but I'm, uh, I'm just following our medical doctors, our Big Ten protocol, and I, I, I think um, we plan on playing the game, but that could change. And if it did, I'd completely understand it. Today, tonight. Thanks. You're welcome. Go next to Kyle Austin. I had one more uh, follow up for you on the COVID thing. Is, is the Big Ten protocol officially 17 days now for guys who test positive? And can you say when that clock started for those guys? Yeah, it started four days ago, I think. Uh, you know, it's 17 days that they can play in a game. Uh, you know, 10 days, they're kind of, I won't say, uh, COVID free, but they're, they're not as likely to transmit anything at 14 days is when they get their heart and then they give them three or four days to get back in shape. So it, it's a serious blow still at 17, as we know, some in the NFL or NBA or some schools have 10 days total, some are at 14. Um, 21 was the max, 17 is still the max, I think, of any conference. And that's what we're doing here. And and we're supporting the protocol, but it, it'll be 17 days, so it'll be somewhere, uh, I don't know, our trainers, I got enough things to worry about. They got that down, but uh, I want to say Marty was, uh, so it was, if it was four days ago, two weeks from today, maybe around the 19th or, no, let's see, what's today? Look at the 27th or so. Yeah, probably before he can play again. Uh, probably around the 20th, he could be out of isolation and, uh, you know, maybe watch a practice or something. He just could not participate. And then right after his heart scan or treatment, or uh, then he can start practicing again. And then, if I could, you mentioned earlier about uh, when he gave more what was kind of the decision with, with, with him not having quite a bigger role against You know, Josh and, and Aaron were playing pretty well, and they were playing very well defensively. And, um, you know, that was the only only reason, to be honest with you. And um, if we had to do it over again, would I do it different? You know, maybe go smaller and, and uh, you know, play Gabe or Aaron at the four some. Uh, maybe, and that's a possibility. But uh, it wasn't anything Gabe did wrong. Hey, Kyle, 
coach, so in the last three games, we've kind of seen the same starting five. So what do you look for when you're picking the starters? And then what do you think are the benefits of having, you know, somebody younger like AJ starting versus Rocket coming off the bench? Well, the whole thing with Rocket was whether he played the point or not, to be honest with you. And, uh, and that was a decision we all made. And, and including Rocket some. Now, he has, I'll tell you what, spent a lot more time looking at it and I think has a different perspective. And, and he's actually, we've played him some there. Uh, I think he's getting used to the driving, the kicking, and, and you know, and not seeing as many of the step back threes, which I think is going to help him. He's still not shooting as good as I think he can shoot, but we just tried to take a little bit more off his plate so that because we think we need him a lot and last year you know he played about 20 that's what he's been playing this year but he's been down a little bit those couple of games but i still think rocket's going to be a very valuable part he'll play more than one but aj has done some things his assist to turnover ratio is very good um he's been pretty good defensively i don't think as good as rock i mean if you know i started the season like i did because that was my hopes but sometimes coaches, you know, our job is to put everybody in the best position they can be put in for them to be successful. And, uh, and I told you, I thought we, we hurt Rocket a little bit because he wasn't right, real ready for that, considering he had no practice time all spring, summer, fall, and exhibition season. So I, I took the blame for that and still do. But he has spent a lot more time in here looking at those things. and. You know, we're still, uh, he's still a very, very, very important part to what we do. We just got to get everybody, everybody's got to play a little better and coach has got to coach a little better. We'll go uh, Larry DeLage to wrap it up. Hey, Tom, uh, how would you describe how you're feeling about this team and, and if you can describe what you think the players' uh, psyche is? And yeah, you know, I think people... There's so much going on in our country right now, you know, that um, I'm not saying that the players, you know, blow anything off, but um, they've learned to deal with a lot. And, you know, last week, I mean, after that game, I I guess I took offense to a couple of questions that more or less, are you, are you losing your team? Are they, you know, there's none of that. I mean, I got as good a kids as I could have. I... I I feel great about where they are. There's nobody we practiced very well. Um, you don't lose your team with a couple losses. People aren't quitting on anybody. We didn't play well, you know. And uh, now if you took the first half of that game, you'd say we played maybe one of our best halves of basketball. So um, it's, the guys have been great. And uh, I've told you in the past when they weren't. So you can either trust me or not. But it, it has been different. You know, as you talk to people all over the country, um, these kids are going through a lot. And uh, you throw a little bit on their plate and lose a couple games and people get mad and all that. And then they're dealing with the COVID and now we start school again. Um, none of you will ever appreciate what those guys are going through. Uh, sometimes I don't appreciate it. You know, I just, as I said, I, I got to go through a lot too. Every day you worry about who's testing. That, that is every day of the week. Uh, and when you tested now for three straight months, um, that's a lot of worrying in, in, in the head coach's part. And, uh, and yet I don't, I don't worry about the demeanor of our guys. I don't worry about the attitude of our guys. I mean, you're always going to have somebody. You know, I, sometimes I'm not crazy about Marky's body language, and I tell him that. But, uh, you know, Mark is going to get more of a chance than he even had, and uh, now he's got he's to play. And... Uh, and I think that's a good thing. But I, there's been no, um, you know, everybody will want a quarterback controversy. Everybody will want something negative. And I'd be the first to go with, you know, I don't like the way they're doing this. Don't like the way they're doing that. Uh, probably one of the sadder um, pregame or postgame events I had in the locker room because I wasn't mad at anybody. I was hurt and disappointed for them and with them. And I say that because we played as hard as we could play. We didn't play as well as we could play. And uh, I think it made them realize there's, there's more than just offense, there's more than just defense, you know. To win championships, you gotta be, and to be successful, you gotta be good in all areas. And if one lets you down, um, 
it's hard to make up for it. Right now we're struggling offensively. It was just a month ago we were scoring 80 points a game and 85 and every thing looked rosy offensively and we were sitting in these same press conference complaining why are teams shooting 48 percent against you and 50. I, I watched uh, Duke last night and you know their team defense is 46 or 7 percent you know it's like unheard of and so we're trying to correct the same things we've corrected it we're way better defensively and now we're struggling some offensively so maybe this will be a good game I know everybody will be up for it I, I knew they were up for the Purdue game and then the, uh, the chance to not play in front of fans on the road or playing Maybe maybe a little bit t tells you how important our fans are at home, and uh, but I swear to you, Larry, there's zero issues, zero. Guys are great. They've been they've worked hard. We've had two a days sometimes. We've had meetings. We've had film sessions. Um, they're they're all locked in on what they can do. So no issues. Quick, quick related follow up: uh, visiting the hospital was that kind of uh, the timing of that kind of diffuse any. Well, you know, it was strange. Yeah, you know, it wasn't meant to diffuse anything. It was planned a month ago, but it was a pretty cool thing, you know, and if there was something that was diffusing, it was, you know, the painting, not by number, but that we all did. Um, it took an hour and a half away because you had to focus in because of the lines and that. And I, I never seen a bunch of guys enjoy it more. And then to go down to the hospital and not be able to go in, we had to be outside and get a chance to meet the miracle kid who had a one percent chance of living to go down there and and see those doctors and nurses and you know we have the audacity to say i'll get letters from me you know you're my hero or players you're my hero um, that's almost disturbing to me now because uh for 10 straight months i think 10 months from today um We've been in this, and these doctors and nurses, uh, frontline workers, have been uh, doing something that probably most athletes and coaches could never do, sustain at the highest level for 10 straight months. And uh, so getting a chance to meet some of those, our players were really impressed by it, and and to get to talk to them and social distance, but, but talk to them, be outside with them, I think was... Uh, it was great for my guys, and I think they appreciated it too, you know. <clears throat> we all strive for greatness, and I think those players got to see a young man who, like I said, had a 1% chance to live, and he looked as normal to me as he could be as a 8-year-old, whatever, and, and to see doctors and nurses that uh, every day they're putting their lives on, in their hands. I mean, we can we can look at COVID any way anybody wants to look at it. We can look at it as a as a virus that can kill, or we can say it's like the flu. I mean, I differ from most people, <clears throat> but at the same time, I understand everybody's got their own way of looking at it. But when you go into a hospital every day and people are laying there with it and you're treating them, those, my man, are the real heroes of our country. You know, it's like the people that go to war. It's it's doing something that uh, you, you get very little benefit. You don't get extra pay. You don't get this or that. You just, you do it because that's what you're, you're made for. And uh, God, it was, it was a joy to see those doctors and nurses. It was a joy to see some of the kids. I just wish we could go in the hospital and visit uh, because it brings a different perspective. But it, it was... It took away a little bit day after a tough loss, but it added a lot uh, for me and I think for my team. So you guys stay safe, stay healthy, keep masking up, and uh, we'll see if now, uh, you know, as teams and a lot of teams are coming down with it, there's more cancellations than transfers, and that's hard to believe, but there are. And uh, so, you know, one of the reasons I wanted the depth and to try to build the depth it was a case this happened. And unfortunately, you know, for Steven, that's uh, sad for me. But for Marty, it's sad because I think he was just starting to come on and now he'll be out for the two and a half, three weeks. And, uh, but we'll, we'll get through it and uh, we'll see what happens.
Thanks a lot.